and welcome to all of you who have joined in today. I, uh, I'm delighted to present to you, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about me and through, through stories and stuff as we go through this presentation, but uh, I'm really passionate about, uh, well, this topic, Ask and, and You Shall Achieve, and what it has to do with leadership and self-leadership. To thousands, uh, as you can tell, of project managers and leaders uh, across the globe, and a lot of them uh, challenges and, and and a lot of them want the same things, right? They you want your team to listen to you. So we're gonna talk about about questions and I wanted to ask you first, is your is your team having a hard time linking, say, knowledge to actual behaviors? Like they're really smart at something, but then for some reason they just don't do it, right? Or or maybe skills to their performance, right? How, how do we, how do you, you ever, any of you have that, that trouble there? Because um, skills don't necessarily lead to performance and, and knowledge doesn't necessarily lead to behavior. So what's going on there? So for you, so we just talked about your team. Now I want to talk about you. Have you ever t attended like a really awesome training seminar or conference or something like that? Right, and you took all these notes, and then you circled and you starred all of the ideas that uh, that you were going to implement. Have you done that? I, I know I have. Right, and yet you then go home and did you do you take any action? Did did you do anything with all of those stars and and circles? Well, a lot of times we do some of it, right, but. There's a lot of great ideas in those old notebooks that you have that you took at other conferences. And so what happened there? Why, why didn't that new knowledge lead to action? And what, is what we're talking about today? Well, let me tell you what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about that missing link. What is it between knowledge and, and action? And what are the three questions that you can help give to to promote team success and that you can ask yourself to promote team success. And what are the three questions that you can use to promote your personal success? We're gonna talk about that today. So before I get into I noticed that good intentions don't lead to breakthrough results, that um, knowledge doesn't always lead to performance and that I'm having to click another button there. That don't always lead to achievement. Well, that too. So what is it? What's that? What's that missing link? Because it's it's everywhere. You can see it everywhere. Uh, there are organizational development teams and and leadership programs and learning uh, management systems that are out there that have tons and tons of great information. But the facts tell us that. 85% of success from well-developed soft skills. And this is research done by Harvard University, the Carnegie Foundation, Stanford Research Center. They've concluded that this is the case. 85% of job, job success comes from having well-developed soft skills. That means that only 15% of job success comes from the technical side of things and the knowledge and the soft and the hard skills. And this research finds that it's beginning, um, beginning back in the work in the 1915, 1918, 1920. And so there's a span now of almost 100 years since Charles Mann, who's the guy who studied this in terms of engineering, uh, since he published his findings. But what have we done with the information that we've learned? Maybe because 85% of underperformance then also comes from this lack of well-developed soft skills. If you think about performance reviews that, that maybe you do with your team or that, that you've had and received, a lot of times you're gonna get feedback about soft skills, not about what you know. See, my degree's in chemistry, and I, I went and I was a lazy chemist, right? And so I learned how to program computers and robots and stuff to do the stuff that I was supposed to do. This was back in the, um, early 90s, and, uh, and so I, I had these skills, right? And yet when I sat down for my performance review, inevitably, boss was going to tell me that I needed 
to get better at presentations. I need to get better at speaking in front of people. And so rather than tell me, hey, Tracy, you're really good at this stuff. Why don't you go take a class on it? What they do is they say, Tracy, you suck at presenting. Go take a class on, on what you suck at. I mean, how many of you on the call love to do the things that you suck at, right? Okay, there are a few golfers probably here. I'm one of them, right? But we don't, we don't like to do the things we're not good at. We like to do the things that we're good at. And yet, we have these soft skills. And so we'll go take a class, and they'll have some great ideas there. But in my uh, situation, I went to a presentation class, and you're never going to guess what they make you do there. Yeah, present. Well, and I felt that I was terrible at it, and who would want to listen to me anyhow? And so as I listened to all the other people present, I actually felt worse about myself. So when I left that course, I wasn't any better at speaking in front of people. As a matter of fact, I was probably a little worse. So what is it? What, what's going on there? Because they gave me good tips and tricks, right? Like we imagine people in their underwear, but okay, that never works. So what are these soft skills things? What are, what are they? How do, how do we get more of them, right? So some people say soft skills are things like, work ethic and attitude, as you see there, communication, self-confidence, self-motivation, teamwork, you know, being a team player, that's a, that's a good soft skill to have. But seriously, what is it? Where do these things come from, right? Well, soft skills, they, they're not always that soft. They're kind of hard to get because they come from what we call cognitive skills. I mean, that's one thing that all of those soft skills have in common. They're, they're things that allow people to collaborate and get along with each other and feel good about themselves, right? And so, skills. That, that deals with our, our perception, the perspective that we can take, and, and essentially our, our thinking. So, how do we improve that? Because what we've tried in the past hasn't really worked because we've had this problem, right? That you, you can't teach what you can't measure. You've heard that, right? So we have this gap between knowledge and performance, but how do you measure it? Well, the truth in that, right? So it's really hard to teach leadership if you leadership. Now we have subjective quizzes and things that you can take to, to do that. But the measuring leadership, that's measuring someone else's perception of, for example, your leadership. So we measure that because you can't measure thinking, right? Well, you could. Because what we're going to talk about today is the good news is that you can measure thinking. You, there are ways to objectively and accurately measure the things that are going on in your head. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that because it's this common belief that if, if the training is good, if the knowledge is good, if the tools and the resources are good, well, then you're going to get some good results. Yeah, for you. But what we believed, uh, isn't necessarily true. And that's why the past approaches that we've used haven't worked on a consistent basis. We believe that if we gave our team and ourselves the right tools and the best knowledge and systems, that it would lead to good actions, good behaviors and results, and you know, produce something uh, that's worthwhile. But we know that isn't always the case, right? So there's something in between. Well, I think that I talked about. And what is that? Well, how many times have you thought, you know what? I have this, I have these skills. And what I really want to do is go to this place, right? The bullseye. We're, we're going to hit the bullseye. So I'm